After living in Wales for five years, I no longer love them. Um, I, 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 I shared that love before. And having walked extensively over so many of the upland areas of Wales and seen just how amazingly little life there is, how scoured, how devastated they are, my, my sense is, is that this, this is a, a picture which I would really like to see change. And, and we've come to accept as natural the idea that our uplands are basically bowling greens with contours, that they've got almost no dense vegetation at all, that there's no trees, um, there's not even any scrub. We, 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 we've seen that as natural. It's highly unnatural. And it's a situation which has been getting worse and worse, first of all, as a result of headage payments, which put more and more sheep on the hills, and then as a result of the single farm payment, which has encouraged farmers to expand the area which is eligible for subsidies by clearing um, more scrub and gorse and, um, and, and tree cover uh, because in order to obtain your subsidy you have to show that the land is what's in what's called agricultural condition which means it doesn't have that vegetation growing on it. But, but it, you don't have to be carrying out any agriculture on it, it just well, has to be in that condition. Well, that, that's a crazy thing. Um, it, it, it's, it's as a result of the way in which taxpayers' money is, is, is being dispersed that, that, that farmers, you know, if, if they want to get the money, they have to clear the vegetation. And, and that is, is completely bonkers. You know, it's not, it's not adding to productivity, or if it is, it's, it's really at the margins. Um, but it's being driven by the, the perverse rules that the European Union is imposing, saying um, uh, you, you, the, the, the wider the area you have, which is free from trees and vegetation, the more money you'll receive. And so there's been, it, it's, the rules have promoted a frenzied clearing of habitats all, all, over the, the Euro, all over the European Union. It's like a perfectly designed scheme for maximum environmental devastation. Um, so paint, paint me a picture if you would. Let's take uh, one of the roads that people would love in Wales, say the one from Preyder over to Devil's Bridge or mm -hmm. through Bithgow to Stoughton. What? would that landscape look like in its natural state? Um, it, it would have been what is called Atlantic rainforest. Um, uh, around um, 9,000 years ago, after things began to warm up when the glaciers had retreated, from Scotland to Spain, the whole of Western Europe was covered by rainforest, and that was forest wet enough to support epiphytes, plants which grow on the branches of trees. And, and in fact, you could still see the remnants of it in, in, in some of the little gorges, um, which are, have been too steep to clear. There are only a few remnants. Um, and, and wherever you see the fern polypidae, the, the many-footed fern which grows along the branches of oak trees and other trees, that, 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 that's a sign that rainforest used to grow. And in fact, it, it covered these hills. It covered Wales. It was dense, closed canopy forest full of great beasts, full of um, wolves and lynx and um, moose and bison. And, uh, well, bison were, were a bit earlier, but um, wolverines, all sorts of amazing creatures. And gradually that got whittled away. But what we've seen since the Second World War with agricultural subsidies, which have encouraged people first to load the hills with sheep and then to clear even more habitat, has been a great acceleration of destruction so that even the small bits which were left have been cleared away and scoured and we live now in a sheep-wrecked country. A sheep-wrecked country is a great place. I was struck by one very startling fact in, in, in your article. Um, if, I, if I'd been pressed to ask, was Wales a meat exporter or a meat importer, I'd probably have thought we were an exporter, you know, all those Welsh lamb adverts and everything. But, but you make the case that actually we're not, and that agriculture doesn't do much to put food on our plate. Well, isn't this an extraordinary thing? 76% um, um, of the area of Wales, just over three quarters, is um, under livestock production, and the great majority of that is for meat. And yet, by value, Wales imports seven times as much meat as it exports. And, and in fact, when you look at the damage done um, by the, the, the clearing the hills, by having these very bare hills maintained by sheep, to the watersheds and to the cycle of, 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 of rain um, falling and percolating down to the lowlands, um, the, the damage um, could actually undo even the small amount of production which is created. Because um, if you look at the, the Severn and the Y, for example, they both rise in Pimlimmon, which is extraordinarily bare, 
it's got sheep all over it, um, there's a cycle of flood and drought. Um, because there's no dense vegetation in the hills to absorb the rain and then release it gradually, when the rain hits the hills, it flashes off. And part of the reason for the increase in floods which have ruined so many householders' lives, but have also take, taken thousands of hectares of really good agricultural land out of production in the lowlands, like in the Severn and the Wye Valleys, because of flooding. Part of the reason for that is that the hills have been scoured. There's no deep vegetation left on the hills. So it's conceivable, given how good the land is in the floodplains of the rivers, and how poor the land is in the hills, that sheep farming in Wales actually causes a net uh, uh, loss of of food production. I know people, that's a blasphemous thing to say, but we've got to face these harsh facts here. Uh, people will hear all of that, uh, and, and some of them will say, well, we buy all that argument, but there's something else that's precious in our uplands, which is our communities, which are linguistically, culturally important to Wales. Is there a way forward for the Welsh uplands that preserves that culture, or do, or, or are you saying that they should be like, you know, United States national parks without anyone living in them? No, I'm, I'm not saying that at all. And and I I'm, I'm, I really see the importance of of preserving culture and language and everything else. Um, and so what, what I, I, I what well, I, I basically all, all this is, is is in the book I've just I've just published called Feral. Um, which um, is, is, you know, I was encouraged to write it because of my experience in Wales, thinking this is just not not right, it's just not right. And so it, it, it's a book about rewilding, about how to bring back wildlife and wild places. But um, in one of those chapters in the book, I spent with a sheep farmer um, talking all this stuff through. And the conclusion I came up with is that actually you can make it all work. You can, you can make it all work together. And the way you do it is this. At the moment, the farm subsidy system, as I was explaining, forces farmers to keep the land clear. It says if you're going to get money from your single farm payment, there can't be what it calls unwanted vegetation. Well, I want it, but they, they call it unwanted vegetation on the hills. And so what I'd say is take that rule away. Um, you, there should also be a maximum amount of land that people can claim for, because I think it's crazy that we should be paying the Duke of Westminster millions every, every year just because he owns so much land. But So have a cap, a maximum amount, maybe 100 hectares, something like that, that you can claim for. And then it's up to you whether you clear the land or not. Now, because sheep farming loses a fortune, um, hill farmers in Wales on average, um, if it were not for subsidies, um, would be losing 20 grand a year. Um, and, and it's only the subsidies which are keeping it going. Um, the, because it costs a fortune, some people will say, well, why am I spending my life chasing sheep across the hills when I could be lying on the beach? And will opt out and will allow their land to rewild. And those will be the people who don't, who don't have a strong cultural attachment to the land, the ranchers, if you like, the absentee owners who turn up every so often on a quad bike and don't have that in intense, deep attachment to the land, which many other farmers have. But the farmers who do have the very strong tradition and the cultural attachment, and they know that the land is very valuable to their culture and, and the rest of it, then they will keep on farming. And, you know, they'll, 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 they'll still, it'll still be viable because of subsidies, but um, they won't get as much money as those who don't farm because the farming actually loses money. You, you lose 20 grand a year by keeping um, sheep and cattle on the, on the farm, but it's still, you know, the average farm subsidy for a hill farmer in Wales is £53,000. So, so keeping your animals reduces that to £33,000, but it's still viable. They, they will continue to farm. And so, and so it, instead of having compulsory farming, which is what the subsidy rules insist mm. on at the moment, you have voluntary farming, and those who want to farm will farm, and those who would rather just take the money will allow the land to rewild. That's what I would like to see.